Okay, um, I've had several requests to do a video on the lizard out of my book. Let's see right there. So I'm going to show you how to make the lizard out of the book. All right, and I'm going to be using a fourth inch gauge, and I'm going to be using a um, sports weight yarn. So it's number two. And that's a good equivalent for the fourth inch gauge, but you can make this on any 24 peg loom. So any 24 peg loom, you can make this on. Okay, this is classified as an advanced pattern. It's difficult, okay, because you've got a lot of texture work you're doing while also working on um, appendages and toes and that kind of thing, because it's all worked into one piece. And that's what can make it complicated. Okay, so what it's saying that you need to do is you're going to start with the body and you're going to work circular and you're going to work 24 pegs in the green and you want to draw a string cast on for 24 pegs. Okay, similar theme draw a string cast on 24 pegs. I do that a lot. Alright, so we're going to. Draw a string cast on 24 pegs and a fourth inch gauge. Okay, we've made our way around. What you want to do at this point is you want to knit for four rows. So you're just going to knit round and round for four rows, okay? So here is row one, and we're starting with the body first, okay? So here we go. Round and round. So pause the video and complete four rows, and when you come back, we'll be ready to start row five which immediately goes right into doing a leg and that kind of thing. So this is where your challenge will come in. Okay, so I have knitted four rows and then it says I'm on row five. And then automatically it starts out doing a leg. Okay, so here's where it's important to read what it says. It says knit four for 15 rows. Then you have to do a toe area, which is a short row within a short row. And then you have a few rows in between um, to knit four for three rows. And then you do a toe. And then you do. Um, okay, so you do toes. Toes. You're going to do two toes in a, row, in a row, so it's like knit two, seven rows, bring original loops back. Knit two, seven rows, bring original loops back. Knit two together four times. Knit four for three rows, and then you're going to do another toe where you knit one, knit two, seven rows, bring original loops back. Knit one, knit one, knit two together, bring original, uh, knit two together two times, knit one. Then it says to knit four for 15 rows. Okay, bring original loops back on page one and four. That's significant. Bring original loops back on page one and four. So what that means is you're going to put a stitch marker on pegs one and four. Okay. So here's how this will work. You're going to knit four for 15 rows, and I'm going to show you how to do this so that you ain't got to seam up these legs later. You can do this as it is written. You don't have to do this method. I just find this makes it easier, and you don't have to do less sewing, and it makes the closure of the leg a lot more solid. Um, you don't have to worry about the seam busting or anything like that because it's actually worked into the knitting, okay? But you don't have to do this. You can just knit four for 15 rows. Keep it simple. Okay. So here's row one. And what you're going to keep in mind is when you slip a stitch, 
which is usually the first stitch of each row, you are going to put a stitch marker on it. Okay. So I'm fixing to slip a stitch. All right. And what I'm going to do is put a stitch marker on it. Okay. So here is row two. So you're going to slip that first stitch and make your way over. So here is row two. You're going to be slipping that stitch, that first stitch. So you're going to put a stitch marker on it. And then this is going to be row three. What you want to do when you're going back to slip is to slip that working yarn underneath the stitch marker. And trust me, it will make it easier to actually add back later. If you don't, it will make it harder. Okay, so that was four. What I like to do is go ahead and add my two stitch markers at a time rather than every single way. You know, every time you slip it, you do it. If you do it like this, you can take your uh, row counter and then just go ahead and click off two rows is what you can do. Okay, so that was row four and this is row five. All right, so I'm going to tell you to pause the video and complete a total of 15 rows so that when we come back, we'll be ready to do our toes. Okay, so we've just completed six rows. All right. Go ahead and pause the video, get your 15 rows done, and then we'll be ready to come back and mess with some toesies. All right. Okay. As you can see, that looks a little like a mess, but let me tell you, it, it's it's actually worth it. Um, what's going to happen? Okay. So we're on row five right now. And we've just done knit four for 15 rows. And then it says to do toes, which is a short row within a short row. Okay. And so you'll need two stitch markers. And what you're doing is you're going to um, knit two for seven rows, bring original loops back then knit two for seven rows and bring the original loops back. Okay, then you're gonna get two together four times. Let me explain what that means. Okay, you'll notice I put a uh, stitch marker on that last stitch. That's all right, we'll end up using it. Okay, so we're gonna start with these two because we're ending over here for 15 rows. Okay, so you're going to knit two for seven rows. All right. So we're going to go row one. Two. Three. Four, five, six, and seven. Then it says to bring the original lips back, and you just created a toe. So you may sit there and be like, well, good Lord, you have all these. Well, you find one that's in a random spot, which is over here. All right. I don't know if I can 
bring that in to really show you. Okay, so you look like you have a mess here, and you don't, you find one that's over in a random spot like that that's not in line with the edge ones, you pick it up and put it down, and then you find where the very closest one to your peg is, which is this one, and you put it on as well, okay. What this is going to do is close off the toe. Okay, so you take those off and you completed a toe. And that's how you do a toe. So when it says toe, that's what you're doing. All right, so we've already got a stitch marker on one of those, so we're just gonna put a stitch marker on one more. And this is kind of like your guideline here on where to pick up from. Okay, so you're going to go for seven rows, so here is row one, row one, Row two, three, four. Six, and seven. And you're going to go in and bring your original lips back so you find that random one that's sitting in a strange spot kind of in the middle. Pull that one back. Okay, then you find where your closest edge one is. Which looks to be here. Closest one to the peg, which looks like that one. You're going to bring it back. next is it says in your leg area that after you've done that you're going to knit two together four times okay so you've done your toe you're going to knit two together four times so you're going to knit two together here one two and one this is two this is three, and this is four. Okay, that's what it means when it says to knit two together four times. Okay, then it says to knit four for three rows, so I'm just going to go one, two, three. So one, two, Now, 
what comes next? It says to do um, another toe area, but it's going to be a little different. What you're going to do is you're going to, and I'm just going to slip it, but you're supposed to knit one. So I'm going to slip one instead, and I'm going to put the two stitch markers on the, those middle pegs because what you're doing is you're getting that back toe. So two in the front, one in the back kind of thing going on. All right. So you're doing your little back toe because how you're doing the body is you're going from front to back. All right. So we're going to knit two for seven rows. So there's one, two, three, four. Six, and seven. Then it says to bring the original loops back, and they should be easy because they're sitting in the middle rather than um, closer to the edges like the first two. Those are a little easier to bring back because they're right in the middle. Then it says to knit one. And you'll have seen there is that. All right. Then what it says to do is to knit one. And I'm actually going to slip it and um, knit one, knit two together two times, and knit one. Okay, so there's our knit two together once and twice, and then knit one. All right, at this point, okay, so we've done our toe, knit one, knit two together, Two times and um, then it says to should be is knit one, knit two together two times, then you're going to knit four for 15 rows and then bring the original loops back and knit two together. So um, this needs to get corrected. I don't know why that didn't get finished and how I missed that. So knit one, knit two together two times, which is what we just did, and then knit one, and then you're going to knit four for 15 rows, and then bring original loops back on pegs one and four, knit two together, then knit two, and then knit two together. So I'll have to go in and make corrections on my PDF for that. I don't know how I missed that, but there's people who've made this, so they must have figured out what I was doing. It's the thing, if you make my stuffed animals enough, you get used to the process of how I do things and then it makes sense so that even if you run into an error you kind of know what I'm doing and um, you can still make the animal but if you're still new to my techniques we're just going to show you how it's done all right so at this point we've just finished 
Now we're going to knit our 15 rows and what you're going to be doing now is you're going to be bringing these loops back. So you're going to find your closest loop, the closest stitch marker to the peg. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring it back. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to, oops, that's on the wrong one. I'm gonna move that over to there. Okay, got it. All right. Now, what we wanna do is slip that first stitch, knit two, and if you don't wanna chain to the side, you want it to be flatter, you wanna purl the two together, but I'm going to just knit the two together. Then you're gonna come over here and you're gonna find the next closest stitch, which is this one. And you're going to bring it up and put it onto the end peg. You're going to slip the first stitch, knit two, one, two, then knit two together. One, two. Okay, you're going to continue that process where you lift up the next closest one, which is right there, put it on the peg, slip one, knit two, knit two together, or knit four for 15 rows. Okay, so. Our next closest one over here. So I'm going to show you this one more time so that you got to kind of got the idea. And then you're just going to keep repeating this until you're down to your last two. Okay, and uh, let me look that together. Okay, um, you do that until you're down to your last two, and then I will show you what to do next. Okay, so. Knit two together. Okay, so pause the video and complete your rows, all right? And then you'll be ready to finish up your leg and move along to the next section. So go ahead and pause the video and finish your leg up until you're down to the last two stitch markers. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to progress to the back of the body into the next section of the other leg, okay? So there was an error in the pattern. Um, it was right after the toe. So it was knit one, knit two together, knit two. It was uh, knit one, knit two together two times, knit one, okay? Then you're gonna knit four for 15 rows. Bring original loops back on pegs one and four knit two together, knit two, knit two together. That completes it, okay? Um, I'll make those notes and changes and uh, add those up into uh, Ravelry's PDF and uh, you can get the update version off of Ravelry and um, I'm trying to work through the book so that I can find any other errors. There's just some patterns that have more errors and most of the patterns don't have any. Um, it just depends. So that was one of the errors that I found working through this. So go ahead and pause the video and complete your 15 rows and then we'll be ready to finish this leg up. Okay, so as you can see, we're down to three, okay, and you would, I told you to stop with the two. If you end up with this, it's not a big deal. What you do is you simply take off that stitch marker, okay? Because this isn't really exact science on this. I mean, you still get your nice little leg here with no sewing involved, okay? 
So you do your rows and then you're going to bring them back up onto the pegs. So bring your original loops back up. Pardon while I make sure my stuff's right. No, I'm not going to be able to knit the two together. So what we did have marked can go up. I'm sorry, I can see it. I'm just going to go back up. All right, it's the 15 rows. Okay. I'm used to pulling up and knitting the two together. Just to bring original loops back up, and you don't actually knit the two together until the next row. Okay. So there you have it. So there's row 15 on that, and you're going to bring these original loops back up and take the stitch markers off and leave it. You'll knit the two together on the next row. Okay, I apologize if I'm groggy. I am working at 2 in the morning to try to knit because that's a quiet time in the house. Now, I would like to show you what you have. So, you see there? There's no seaming that you have to do. And it does make for a stronger... limb to have it done like this. Okay, so where are we at next? Um, knit 15, uh, bring original limbs back on pegs 1 and 4. Then it says to knit 4 and spike. You'll see spikes show up everywhere. This is what a spike is and it never changes. You knit 2 for 6 rows. You bring the original loops back. Okay. And then you knit two together two times. Let me make sure everything's looking right. This row is. Okay. So, knit four, fifteen. Bring the original loops back. Knit two together two more times. Knit four, three rows. Toe. Back knit one, knit two together two times, knit one, knit four for fifteen rows, bring original weights back on page one and four. Excuse me, I thought I messed up. Really, I shouldn't be working this early in the morning. Let me uh, try to get that around. Um, Okay, so the leg was right. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here trying to do this and the leg is right. Okay, then it says to knit four and then to do a spike. Spike is knit two together six times, bring original lips back, and knit two together two times. Okay, that's what it says. All right, so let's do that. I'm sorry, I thought I had an error, and there is not an error. I need to make sure of that. So there is no error in this book so far on this. Alright, so you have one, two, three, four. Okay, you've knitted four. Then it says to do a spike. So it says knit two for six rows, bring original lips back. So, you know, you're going to be bringing your original lips back. Your spike is basically a ridge in the back. It's a ridge, the spike, it's whatever you want to call it. It's what's going to give it more of the scaly textured appearance that lizards tend to have. Okay. That's all you're doing. Alright. So, you've got your marks. What you want to do is you want to knit two for six rows. So here's row one, row two, row three, row 
of 4. Row 5. And row 6. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take and bring your original edge back up. And then it says to knit two together two times. Okay. You've created a little spike, and I can't, I don't think it'll show very well at this point. I have to get a little further down to see what it looks like, okay? Okay, once you complete that spike, it says to knit four again. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. Okay, then it says you're going to knit another spike. Keep in mind, this is a spike, so every time you read it in there, this is what you're doing. Okay, so here's row one. Two. Three. Four. It says bring original loops back. Knit two together two times. So here one. Then it says to knit four again. So here you go. One, two, three, four. Then you're going to go back in the video where the leg is being done, and you're going to repeat the leg in the next four stitches. So naturally we're going to put our little stitch marker in there. For our bring original loops back on pegs one and four. Four. Okay. So, pause the video, go back to the part that shows the leg, and repeat exactly what you did here, here. Okay? So you should have like a little lump here, and a little lump here, and a leg here, and a leg here when you're done. Okay? So go ahead and pause the video, complete your leg, and then we'll come back and we'll be ready to do rows six, and then we'll be ready to do um, what's going to be a repeat row of row seven and row eight. And it's going to repeat for what looks like eighteen rows. 20 rows. So there's 20 rows in the body. Because row 7 and 8 is part of 1920, and rows 9 through 26 is 18 rows. And you're repeating rows 7 and 8. So go ahead and pause the video, complete your leg, and what I'll do is show you row 6, row 7, and row 8. And then I'm going to leave you to finish up the bulk of the body um, because you're going to be repeating rows 5 and 6 on row 27 and 28. So when I come back and show you the next section, you're going to basically be on your own for most of it until you're ready to come back and start finishing up the tail area. Okay, so
we have three more vital rows and then you'll know what the bulk of the body is done in and then uh, you're going to be working on the tail end okay so go ahead pause the video complete your leg and we'll come back and we'll do rows six seven and eight and then you'll be left to do rows nine through 28 on your own okay pause the video okay so as you can see i have my two little legs there all right okay so we have completed row five and now we're on row six and basically on row six you're just going to knit around and if there's two stitches like this knit two together and then knit over and then knit two together and then just knit your way around okay so then we're going to start a repeat section okay i'm going to explain those two rows and then i'm going to leave you to complete your body section and your another two feet and two legs and then when we come back we'll be ready to do our tail section okay so and then those two all right we're back to one stitch okay so here's how it goes so on row seven it says knit eight spike knit four spike knit eight okay so we're gonna knit eight so we're gonna go one two three four five six seven eight all right then it says spike if you go back up to the top it says knit two for six rows, bring the original loops back and knit two together. Alright, so remember your spike. So you're going to knit two for six rows so here's row one row two row three row four row five and row so you knit back and forth those two rows for six rows then you go in and you add your stitches back and row stitches back take those off Then it says knit the two together and you've completed a spike. So there's one. And there is two. And there's your spike. Then it says to knit four. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Got it? Okay, then it says to do another spike. So we're going to go in. Set up our spike. And knit two, six rows. So there's row one. Here's row two. Row three. Row four.
You're gonna go in, you're gonna bring your original lips back. So those markers are four. And then you're going to knit two together. And then it says to knit eight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's row seven. That row seven is going to be a start of a two row repeat. All right, and then it says knit eight, and then row eight is just to knit the row. Okay, so here's how this is going to go. You're going to go in and you're going to continue to repeat row seven and eight, rows nine through 26. Okay, that's probably going to be about 20 something rows total. But you want to just go in and repeat that from rows 9 through 26. Then we'll be ready to, um, then you're going to repeat row 5, which is your leg row, and then repeat row 6, which is to get every peg back to a single stitch. And that's where I'm going to leave you to, is to complete most of the body. Alright, so now it's time for you to complete the bulk of the body. So repeat row seven and eight, but with the two rows we just did for rows nine through 26. Repeat seven and eight rows nine through 26. So I believe that's about 20 rows. Okay, so then what you wanna do is you want to repeat row five, which is your leg row, okay? So you want to go back to the video and it shows you how to do the legs, all right? Then what you want to do is go in and repeat row six, which is where you get all your stitch, all your pegs back to one stitch. And when you do that, when we come back to doing this, we're going to be starting on rows 29, all right? And that's when we'll get started. So row 29 is where we're going to come back to. So go ahead, pause the video, complete the majority of your body, and then we'll be back and ready to finish up the tail area and um, moving on from there. Okay, as you can see, there's your little front legs, there's your little lizard body, and there's your two back legs. And now we're ready to do our tail. And um, this is where it might can get confusing, but I, I, don't, I don't think it is too confusing. Um, you just gotta understand the split that you're doing, okay? So what you're seeing on row 29, is says to knit six and start working flat, and then knit 12. So knit six, so here's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what this means to start working flat. All right, you're gonna work back the other direction, okay? So you're just going to work back the other direction and you're going to knit 12. So what you've done is you've divided the loom in half this way and this way, okay? So here's where you're going to knit 12. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So now what you want to do is you want to decrease, so you want to sit this and you want to decrease it over. Then it says to knit eight and then to decrease the end. All right, so we've just decreased. We're going to knit two together. Then it says to knit eight. So here we go. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, and eight. Then it says to decrease. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that end stitch and you're going to move it over one. Okay. Then you're going to knit the two together. This is basically, this is the bottom half of the um, tail. Okay. Now, if you're really liking the stitch patterning, you can mark those two stitches and know that every other um, row you're going to do a, a spike. But if you if you don't care whether that goes down the other direction, don't don't worry about it. Okay. So then at this point it says to knit rows one, 31 through 35. So 31 through 2, 3 through 4, it's about 5 rows. And so you're going to knit 5 rows. And what you're going to find <clears throat> is you're just going to continue that kind of decreasing and then knitting so many rows to create the tail. Now if you want a really long tail area you can go in and do um, say seven rows in between rather than five. Okay so go ahead and pause the video and follow this decreasing method and then the rows in between on the, um, the book. So rows 31 through 35 is knit then on throw 36, you're going to decrease the end stitches to get down to a total of 8 stitches. Then you're going to knit rows 37 through 41. Then rows 42, you're going to decrease on the ends to get it down to 6 stitches. Then you're going to knit for rows 43 through 47. Then row 48, you're going to decrease on the end stitches again to get it down to 4 stitches. And then on rows 49 through 53, you're going to knit. And then on row 54, you're going to decrease again on those end stitches to get it down to two stitches. And then you're going to knit rows 55 through 59. I'll give you a quick glance at it. There it is. Great glance. All right. So. We're working rows 31 all the way through 59, decreasing. Let's go ahead and pause the video and get that much done. All right. And then we will come back and I will finish and I will tell you how to start the other half of the tail. Okay. So I have completed the bottom half of the tail. So there you can see the legs and there's the bottom half. And um, what you want to do is you want to start off because you need to do the other half of the tail. You're going to follow the same instructions as the first half of the tail. I like to do a slip knot and place it on that first peg. Okay. Alright, not too tight. Alrighty. So I'm gonna toss that bottom leg over. There. It's attached. Now we're gonna follow what it says originally where you go in and you move the first and last stitch over. And then you knit the row. Okay. And then you knit for five rows, just like we did on this half. 
So you decrease a row, knit five rows, decrease a row, knit five rows until you're down to your two pegs and then you just bind off as you can see here. So you're going to repeat the same thing from this half that you did on this half. And then when you're done, we should be ready to go in and sew the tail together and start on the head. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video, complete the other half of your tail, just like you did this half. Okay. Okay, so here's our body, and um, what you may want to do is just go ahead and sew up that tail. Sew down that side, sew down that side, and you have your legs here. Um, before you sew up, you may want to try to stuff your legs. You can stuff them with polyfill using... Um, a crochet hook that fits inside there and um, or you can try to use a pipe cleaner to go in and, and do that as well but I think stuffing with a trying to stuff it with the end of a crochet hook, but in the crochet hook would be easier. Okay, so go ahead and uh, sew that tail up. You want to stuff them back legs, stuff the legs first, then sew the tail up, stuff the body, and then that way you'll be ready when I get to finishing the head up. You can go in and assemble the rest of it. Okay, so we're to the head. And what it says to do is it says for the head to knit flat for 18 pegs. You're going to draw a string cast on 18 pegs. And then you're going to knit four rows flat. Okay. So the, fa the head is kind of unusual. But we're going to get through this. I think this is where the biggest challenges have been for... Um, everyone trying to make this is with the head and so uh, let's go in and work this up so draw string cast on flat 18 pegs so here's three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen and eighteen here we go Okay, and we're going to work our way back. Alright, so then it says the first thing you're going to do is knit four rows. So how we're doing this head, so we're starting off and we're doing the bottom of the head first and then working to the top of the head okay because the head is created by using a short run method all right as you'll notice by the wraps and turns okay so here's how this works do you remember when it gets to spike that you've got to go back in the pattern where it says spike on that short row and i'll tell you how to do this now when you've done a drawstring cast on for 18 pegs the next thing it says to do is to knit for four rows. So you're going to knit back and forth for four rows. Okay? So go ahead and pause the video and knit for four rows. Then we'll be ready to start row five and work our way through there, which comes more of a challenge. And um, we'll figure that one out and everything. Um, we will be working our way through, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, complete your four rows, and we'll be coming back and starting on row five. Okay. So we are now to the next section. And row five, it says to knit 17, wrap and turn, knit 16, wrap and turn. 
So um, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So this is mid seventeen. Wrap behind the next peg and turn. Now you're going to go back the other direction. Then it says to knit 16. Okay. So you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Then it says to wrap and turn. Okay. Now what it says to do is to knit 15, wrap and turn, knit 14, wrap and turn. You're starting to see a pattern develop here, okay? So I'm going to show you one more time. So you're going to knit 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, is that right? No, let me check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm off one. 15. Excuse me. It is one something in the morning. All right, so you're going to wrap and turn. And then it says to knit 14 and wrap and turn. Now you will see this process of where you continue to just keep wrapping and turning until you're down to two stitches in between a whole bunch of wraps and turns. All right, so you're going to knit your way over to just before the last peg, which should be 14 stitches. All right. And then you're going to wrap and turn. Okay? So, go ahead and pause the video. Continue the process of wrapping and turning until you have two single stitches between your wraps and turns. And so you should be coming back and being on row 13. Okay? So it should be a wrap and turn and then knit two. So when we come back, we'll be ready to start row 14, okay? It's going to pause the video, complete your wraps and turns, and we'll be ready to come back and start on row 14 and continue on out. And um, this is when you're going to be starting on the other half of the head, okay? So it's going to be changing up, and you're going to be doing the top half of the head, so that's where you're going to start adding the texturing back in. Okay, so this is what you should have on the inside of your loom. Okay, the top of your head right there. Alright, you should see two single stitches. Then you should see a whole bunch of wraps and turns in here. All the way over. And you should see a whole bunch of wraps and turns over here. Way over. Okay, so what I want it says is it says to knit two and then knit two together. What that means is you're going to knit two, then you're going to knit 
two together. Then it says to knit three, knit two together. We go one, two, three, knit the two together. It says to knit four, knit two together, knit five, knit two together. You see a pattern. You always start with the peg you just finished with. So here's our knit four. Knit two together. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and continue this process. Knit five, knit two together, knit six, knit two together, knit seven, knit two together, knit eight, knit two together. Stop. Come back to the video. Because what happens on row 21 is we start doing our texturing for the top of the head. And then from 20, row 21 on out, you're adding back in while also keeping up with your spikes. And I'm going to tell you an important thing to be able to keep up with what you're doing, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video and get yourself to row 20 where to knit eight, knit two together, all right? And then we're going to be starting from there. Okay, we've got, should be nine single stitches in between wraps and turns. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You see a whole bunch of wraps and turns here, and you see a whole bunch of wraps and turns here. Okay, so we are at row 21. All right, get you a couple of uh, stitch markers. All right, and my suggestion is to mark off your two pegs. All right. stitch markers ready and if you remember the spike in the earlier part of the pattern. Okay so you say that you see here it says to knit one and then do a spike. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take and put that there, lay that down, pick that up and wrap that around there. Just this is just to keep in mind, these are your spike pegs, okay? Then it says to knit four. One, two, three, four. And then you should have another two, okay? So make sure one, two, three, four. And then you're going to be doing another spike. So you're going to stick this in here. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I know that this never changes. And if you see a change in the pattern where the spike is not in the same area, you need to give me a heads up. But I'm fixing to find out whether it is or not. All right? So those are your spike pegs. They never change. And when you're adding in slowly back and forth, the knitting two together, it helps to go ahead and have it all set up for yourself. Okay? So, first thing it says is you're going to knit one. And then you're going to do a spike. Well, come back to earlier in the pattern on page 108. It says the spike is to knit two for six rows, bring original loops back, and knit two together two times. Okay, so put your stitch markers in there because here's your original stitches to bring back. for six rows. So here's row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, 
and then row six. And it says to bring the original loops back. stitches together two times. There's your spike. Just like you did with the body, you're doing the same thing here. Then it says to knit four. One, two, three, four. Then it says to do the spike again. Show you a couple of times in here so that you got the idea of what's going on, but then I'm gonna let you go in and finish up the head, alright? So here is row one, two, three, four. Bring the original loops back. Take that out. Knit two together two times. And do another spike. Okay, so knit two together two times. One and two. Then it says to knit two together. Well, now, that is row 21. We move to row 10, which looks easy. It says to knit 10, knit two together. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Knit two together. Okay. Now we're to row twenty-three, where it says to knit two and do a spike. So you have one, two. Then you're going to do a spike again. So you get your two things on there. And again, if you're running into this pattern and you're sitting there thinking, she's got this wrong, make a note to me. I will go in and change it. But I'm pretty sure my head is right. Alright. So, here is row one. Two, three, four, five, and six. back on. Here's row one and here's row two. And it says to knit two together two times, okay? And so you're basically always going to be doing the spike on the same direction when you're going the same direction. And the next one is always going to be a knit. Then it says to knit four. One, two, three, four. Then it says to do the other spike. All right. 
So you should be starting to get an idea of what I'm doing here. And you're going to continue this on out because your spikes are always going to be done on these stitch marker areas, okay? They aren't going to move and that will help you keep up with where they're at at all times while you're increasing back out. So here's two, three, four, back knit two together two times to knit 12, knit two together. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, knit two together. Alright. Now, you're going to continue this patterning because then the next one it says to knit three, spike, knit four, spike, knit two, knit two together. Then knit fourteen, knit two together. Then knit four, spike, knit four, spike, knit three, knit two together. Then it says knit 16, knit two together. 20, 29, knit five, spike, knit four, spike, knit four, knit two together. And then it says to knit. All right. So continue this patterning you see. Again, these are markers to tell you that is where you're always going to do the spike. So at this point, what you know you're doing is you're still adding a, a wrap and turn each row back. So you're going to add this wrap and turn. Then you're just going to knit your way back and add that wrap and turn. Then you're just going to knit your way back while doing the spikes and add this wrap and turn. You get a feel for when you're adding the spikes and when you're doing the adding on the knit two together. Right, so you're still following that knitting two together process back and forth. All right, and what you should start to notice is you're creating like a little nose. See, you're creating an indention here. All right, and what that's going to do is give you a head that looks more like a lizard. Okay, so what you want to do is go ahead and pause the video and get yourself to row 30. When we come back, we're gonna go on, um, actually get yourself to row 29 because we have a two row repeat for row 30 and 31, and then you're gonna repeat row 30 and 31 again for rows 32 and 33. Okay, so um, pause the video, get yourself to row 29, and then we will come back and we will do row 30 and 31, which we'll repeat again for 32 and 33. And then we'll be ready to do a drawstring bind off and finish the head up. Okay? Okay. 
Okay, I just added my last drop and turn back in, so you can see I'm over here and I'm ready to be working my way back the other direction. So, I don't know if you can see this, but maybe you can kind of see the texturing going on. Okay, so there is the top part of the head. Okay, and there is our bottom. Alright. So, here's how this rolls. We're on row 30, and then it says to just knit row 30, which is part of a two-row repeat. Okay, so you're going to just knit your way over, and you're just going to keep following the same process of what we've just been doing with these spikes. You're just going to do them in the same area, which is the whole reason for marking them. Always down the same two pegs. And it'll line up nicely with the body, okay? So row 30 is... Knit. Row 31 is knit 5, spike, knit 4, spike, knit 4. Five. All right, and it should be. So knit five. One, two, three, four, five. And here's your marking for your spike. Okay. It says to knit four. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And there's your spike. One, two. And it says to knit five. One, two, three, four, five. And then knit your way back. Okay. And you're gonna do that. The spike row two more times. And what you're going to do when you finish is you're going to draw a string bind off. So go ahead, pause the video, get you another spike row done, knit your way back, one more spike row, and then when we come back we're ready to do a draw string bind off. And then we're going to be closing our gaps on the sides, closing the head up, stuffing it, stuffing the body, that kind of thing. We're going to be really winding this down because you're done with the loom after these last four rows, okay? Okay, we are done. And it says that we are now ready to draw string bind off. Okay. So what I'm going to do is cut me a tail, toss the bottom loop over, pull through. Alright, so I'm going to toss the bottom loop over, and pull through. So go ahead and draw a string bind off. Alright, and then we'll be ready to start working on our head, finishing it up with adding eyes if we want to, um, cinching it, stuffing it, that kind of thing. There's a lot we can be uh, doing with the eyes, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, get your drawstring bind off done, and then we'll come back and be ready to show you how to do the head. Okay, I pulled on my drawstring ends, not real heavily, just enough. Okay, so you can kind of see what shape you've got going on here. Okay. Um, if you're going to add safety eyes, and I don't know that I am, on these smaller ones like this, what I've been doing is actually painting in the eyes. Um, and so I'm probably going to end up painting in the eyes on this one. But what you want to do is you can pull those in and technically you need to close up those gaps right there. Or you can just sew it onto the body as is. Right? Um, so what I'm going to do is you don't actually have to close up those gaps if you don't want to because you're not going to see them. You're just probably going to sew them on. Um, what you want to do is go ahead 
and start stuffing your head. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit at a time so I can make sure I can get in that front point like that. Sorry. I don't know it would be hard to stay in camera. Okay. So I'm going to shove that and I'm going to pull my drawstrings together. Okay. You have that nice center piece right there and your eyes are typically going to go right there, right in the third one. You're going to cinch it in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is tie this together. Okay. I'm going to tie it together. Alright, and you have an opening. It should work fine. Okay. And you should have a nice flatter head. Okay. And you should start to kind of see what you got. Now, you can... I'm going to take the tail. I cut this long to sew on the head. What I may try to do is cinch my eyes with the shorter tail. And that's where you're just going to want a needle. And uh, you're going to do this this way. Right. So you just take your needle, thread it in. And um, you're going to do a eye cinching thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to go around. You'll see the the short row area. What you want to do is find that short row area and go in between the second and third and go through there. Okay. And then just send it back through. Find that short row area between the second and third. Okay. And then you're going to pull it. And you see it's going to cinch that eye area. Okay, well you're going to do the same thing. You're going to send it through. You're going to cinch that eye area. Okay. And that's where I'm most likely to go in and paint in my eyes. And then when you have that done, you can send it right back through like that. Once you got that done, you can send that right back through and tie it off again. And that's how you cinch the eyes. Now if you're doing safety eyes, you add your safety eyes before you even stuff it. And but that's still going to be the same area. And then you can cinch the eyes after you stuff. After you add the eyes and stuff, then you can cinch and you go as close to above and below the eye as possible when doing that, okay? Now what I'm going to do with this extra is just shove it up in here. Okay. Now, um, for the body, that's where it can be a challenge. Okay, so you got an area around here that you can easily sew onto the body. No problem. Okay. So your thing is, is you've got to get your legs stuffed. And I'm going to stuff them. And you just want to do a little at a time. You can take, you don't have to have um, a crochet hook. You can take a... Uh, paintbrush, okay, you can go in and you can kind of put that over there and just go in and work it in, okay. I find the fatter the area is, the easier it will go in, you know. Um, you can try the end of a pencil if you want to go in there. You can Try some scissors, but don't cut your leg kind of thing, okay? 
um, but typically if you're working with something this small it isn't going to be so easy to go in and do that. I'm trying to find my better crochet hook on this size. So, um, but what you do is you go in and you find what'll work and just mess with different things. If you want something small, you can stick up in there and really stuff those legs. Okay. And there. I've stuffed my leg. Alright. Now, my suggestion is to stuff all your legs first, then sew up your tail. Use the crochet hook to make sure you get your tail stuffed as far down as you can. And then stuff the body. Okay. So stuff your legs first because that's the harder part and you need access. And if you sew up your tail first, getting access to stuff these back legs would be very difficult. So stuff your legs, sew up your tail, stuff your body. Then you should be ready to sew on your head to here. And it should be pretty self-explanatory. You want to line up this spike area to sew it on. Okay. So pretty self-explanatory. So go ahead and finish assembling your lizard. Come back and uh, kind of show you what it looks like finished and uh, what it looks like with painted eyes in, okay? Okay. So I have assembled I sewed up my tail, and when you're sewing up your tail, you need to find the very edges, okay? That way you can get the most span of your tail, okay? And I sewed my head on, as you can see, and I hand painted in eyes, okay? On both sides, hand painted it in, okay? Um, I noticed that this probably looks a little like a chameleon, um, which is still technically a lizard, part of the lizard family. Um, you can try flattening it out, you can try doing all kinds of other things, but this is how you make the lizard from my book. Okay.